Um, I'll call the meeting to order at, um, I've got 6.15 p.m. Uh, September 14th, 2021. Are there any additions or changes to the agenda? Yeah. Krista is asked to move her item up. She has to leave at seven o'clock. Okay. So we'll do that. Uh, we'll do that first um, after the consent agenda then. And Orca's trying to get into the meeting. And they are in once and I've approved. I'll approve it again. <laughs> Admitting admit failed. Yeah. Okay. It's good when one's able to admit failure. <laughs> So, yeah, I just keep hitting admit and it's saying admit failed. So, you can hear me. I can hear you just fine. Uh, I should also probably check to make sure that we have a uh, a quorum. And so, yeah. Alan also says that he doesn't have any audio, but he seems to be getting video. But you can't hear me, correct? I can can hear you fine, Alan. We can hear you, Alan. Okay, there's John. What did you do, John? Yeah. Download the team. Oh, he downloaded the Teams app. Okay. For what it's worth, I'm using the Teams app and I used it earlier today with success. So I, I don't know what the deal you is. You can hear me? Yep. Yes, I downloaded the Teams app. I mean, I'm using the Teams app as well. I, I'm probably signed into my UVM. Right. I'm, I, I, I'm running for better or for worse in the edge browser be just so that I could start the meeting. That was the only way that I could get connected to this. Wow, this is a, <laughs> this is a good start. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move let's, on. So let's roll. So um, aside from moving Chris up, is there anything else to add to the agenda? Okay, public comment. Is there anything um, folks wanna talk about that are rela not related to items on the agenda? Okay, moving on to the consent agenda. I move that we approve the consent agenda as presented, which includes the August 10th minutes. There you are, Chuck. This is weird. Second. Okay, so moved by me, seconded by uh, Jeremy Matt. Any further discussion? Uh, yeah, one thing that I forgot to do before I sent out the draft is to add the participation grid for who uh, was, or for what towns were present. Um, I will add that before posting the minutes. Right, I think I should add that before posting the minutes. Okay, that sounds good. Anything else related to the minutes? Any objections to the adoption of the consent agenda? Okay, consent, consent agenda is adopted unanimously. Thanks for that. Um, looks like I screwed up the times for the financial report, but uh, Phil, you want to uh, take that? Okay, so... Uh... My apologies, I had to reboot after you uh, were commenting that I was up and running. Looks like I lost it again. No, we can hear you. Yeah, keep going. Oh, yeah, oh, you can hear me? Okay, I can't see my report, uh, but suffice to say there are a handful of bills that the executive committee will be approving, um, totaling about just over $6,000. Most of those are for the project management fees. Uh, and there's some, um, uh, and my computer is wonky. Um, uh, there, since there were, there were some checks cut, uh, that will, uh, again, be, be approved by the, uh, executive committee in the next meeting. Uh, unfortunately, that's all I have, uh, without looking at my report. Got it. Got it. Thank you. That. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any any questions for Phil? Any, any questions for Phil? Questions Got it. For Thank you. Yep. Okay. So I'm getting some feedback from either Tom or Alan. Okay. That seems to have seems to have solved it. I think. Okay. Um, okay, so let's move on to the clerk's report. Esteemed clerk. Um, I don't really have a ton to, for, to report. Um, I might, I've been keeping up with uh, posting the minutes. 
I'm still getting a lot of feedback from Ellen, though. Um, feedback so, from me. Feedback so, from me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> or maybe a few different people. The only people that I hear with, the only people I see with hot mics are Alan and David Lawrence, but I see Alan muted, so um, should be fine. All right, so I see. Well, I don't um, think it was me either, but I will mute just to be sure. All right, great. All right, so I see um, I see Tom now, I see Ray now, and I see uh, Walker. Hey there. And so this this is, so maybe if you don't have anything to report, Jeremy, we do have a couple of, of folks here that are joining us for the first time and maybe we can take just take a moment to um, have them identify themselves Oop, if I didn't just have a big network network spike here uh, Walker would you take a moment and introduce yourself sure uh, my name is Walker Blackwell I live in uh, Washington Vermont and I'm the alternate for uh, Katarina in Washington and um, I have a tech background and grew up in Cabot and also had fiber to to my home in Burlington. Um, so I've I've been a previous beneficiary of fiber. Um, so I'm excited to to be involved. Wonderful. So welcome. If you have any questions or if you want kind of the 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 rundown of how CV fiber got where it is, where we're at, if you want to kind of a catch up. Send me a message uh, directly, and we'll schedule a time. We'll just we'll chat for half an hour, an hour, or something. That sounds great. Thank you. You're welcome. So, we also have um, Brian Evans um, Munjin. Brian. Hello. Uh, this is Brian Evans Munjin. I uh, I have recently uh, last week um, appointed by the Elmore Select Board to be the new Elmore uh, representative. Re taking over for Hans de Boer. Uh, Hans is going to continue in an alternate means uh, for the time being. Uh, presently, um, Waterbury is my hometown, but I have a summer location in Elmore on the lake, um, have new, dealt with uh, numerous fiber interconnections. Um, presently, I, in various forms, take service from Comcast Consolidated uh, in, in various capacities of DSL and fiber. Um, my business is utility services. We're out of Waterbury, Vermont, and we work with utilities all across the nation, including those that offer broadband services in addition to their electric services. So that's my background. Great. Well, welcome. And Brian, the same offer is on is on the table for you. If you uh, would like a catch up or if you have any questions about this, please uh, please feel free. Let me know, and we'll uh, we'll chat. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. We also have uh, Gavin Bodnar from um, CVRPC. Gavin, introduce yourself real quick. Hello, I'm Gavin Bodnar. I'm uh, with America Vista with uh, CVRPC. Uh, I have a background in civil engineering. Uh, um, just getting up to speed on the on this new project uh, uh, Christian told me all about, so I'm excited to, to learn all about it. And um, yeah, I'll be taking some minutes tonight, although Christian will be taking minutes as well because it's my first time taking minutes. <laughs> so, all right. Thank well, thanks for joining us, Gavin, and we definitely appreciate the help. And uh, last but not least, uh, Will Anderson, who is um, a staffer for Vicuda and is joining us tonight. Will, would you introduce yourself? Sure. Hello, everyone. Uh, I, I uh, my name is Will Anderson. I'm as of last week the first uh, staff member, first employee, and only employee for the CUD Association. Uh, I'm also a resident uh, here in Montpelier, part of the CB Fiber Communications Union District. Uh, and my uh, role here will be to try to coordinate some shared services amongst CUDs. So. I'll be listening in and reaching out to uh, to J Jeremy and others of you to to get a read on where CB Fiber is at with uh, with the receiving some of these shared services, and I'll also be working to coordinate with the Community Broadband Board uh, and other state officials. Uh, so um, I'll, I'll put my contact information in the chat, and please feel free to reach out to me uh, to talk about any and all of these issues related to the association or to liaising uh, with the state. Um, I'll also add that I was uh, previously at AmeriCorps Vista, uh, Gavin, uh, with the USDA, 
uh, and a recent alumnus of that program. So thank you. Uh, thank you for letting me listen in and looking forward to hearing where CV Fiber is at. Thanks very much, Will. And it's uh, too bad it would be a conflict of interest. We have a uh, we have an opening for a, for a Montpelier rep. So, but uh, we'll, we'll we'll have to keep searching. In the future, in the future, maybe I'll take you up on that. I'd, I'd very much like to. But for now, I'll, I'll stick to representing the association. Of course, of course. Okay, so that's uh, great. Great to have some new folks um, joining us. Um, moving on to the project manager's report. Did you want to do that? Uh, Ray, or was somebody else going to? David, I don't remember. If some one of you were going to present Jerry's materials since he's out. If you're speaking, David, we can't hear you. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, no? yes, we can hear you now. Okay, I'm just going to read the report since I don't have, it doesn't look like it wants to share properly. Um, so in the last, uh, since the last meeting, um, Jerry has been busy doing managing grants and filing grant reports, um, preparing the next grant application, hiring contractors, managing contractors, uh, putting, helping putting out requests for proposals and requests for bids and working with our various partnerships. I can tell you he's a busy guy. Um, active Public Service Department and Vermont Community Broadband Grants. Right now we have $160,000 that was funded under CARES, fully obligated, and it was expended at the end of 21, needs to be expended by the end of 21. Not exactly sure what that one is, but anyway, Northfield Roxbury, ninety thousand dollars to do the uh, plan to connect. I think it's about forty houses in Northfield Roxbury. ValleyNet has told us that they've completed the poll inventory and it's submitted poll applications to WEC, and they're planning construction for October, November. In Moortown, we have one hundred fifty thousand dollars. The poll inventory has started. We did a ride out yesterday. I did a ride out yesterday with WEC. It was very informative. Um, looks like the majority of the polls we looked at yesterday looked pretty good without a lot of work. And we'll probably submit applications next week. Um, let's see, next slide. Um, so we've got the, la the most recent grants. We got 190,000 for high level design for the non-WEC portion of the district. And we got $200,000 for the WEC 3CUD design and we had a kickoff meeting on September 3rd. We've had a second meeting with Vantage Point um, on Friday of last week and they're moving right along. Um, we have asked them to see if they can speed up the, the schedule, which is scheduled now for completing completion at the end of December. Um, the Area A poll inventory, which is $225,000. Uh, the contractors Apex, Eustis and Tilson have all started. Some of you may have seen them out on the street already. Uh, I've had a few comments about the, the logo on the side of the vehicles, positive comments. People, actually, it's a pretty good thing because people are seeing that we're there. Um, in fact, they asked me, when do I get my fiber? <laughs> um, and these are, you know, Callis, East Montpelier, Moortown, oops, and Middlesex and, and um, Worcester. Um, First week data reporting is incomplete. Well, we got some of it, but we need to modify the fields, the data they're collecting based on the meeting we had yesterday in the field with WEC. Grant application, the pre-construction funding grant. A draft um, application is under development. Very detailed guidelines have been issued by the Vermont Community Broadband and um, Jerry has pretty much filled out all the boilerplate that has to go with this application with the help of a bunch of people from the, the board. Um, but we're going to apply for more poll inventory for areas B and C, make ready for area A, 
and detailed design and administrative tasks. And according to the broadband board, we have uh, only less left available in terms of our allocation for pre-construction funds under the, the current legislative session was $2.9 million. So we have more needs and we have uh, uh, money to get from the state. So we'll, and we'll talk about the, that later. Uh, the request for proposals. We have an accounting um, proposal out there. Submittal time was extended and interviews are ongoing. There's an audit request for proposals. Submittals were due, uh, due on Saturday, uh, Friday, one of them soon. And operator submittals, we got five, five respondents. We narrowed it down to two in which we've sent out very lengthy questions last Friday and expect them to have responses to all those questions by this Friday. And make ready. We have under development a request for proposals. We're trying to get Washington Electric to take on that task more than us. And I think, yep, request for bids. So yeah, one more. Um, we've put out a request for bids for B, area B and C, and we received submittals from all three of our um, indefinite quantity contractors. And we're awaiting funding, actually. So that. We have to apply for the money before we can start this next project, but we got the bids in and they're all in terms of pricing all pretty comparable. We're going to be able to make some decisions based on the quality of the work that they're currently doing. In terms of partnerships, you have a question from Walker. Oh, go ahead, Walker. I didn't hear oh, it. No question for me. None. Okay. I am not, I'm trying to read two screens here, so I apologize for my inattentiveness. <laughs> um, uh, in terms of partnerships, when um, Jerry, myself, and sometimes Jeremy have been meeting with WEC operations staff in terms of coordinating the poll, and poll data, poll applications, write outs, make ready RFP, and high level design. Um, these meetings have been very productive because it's at it, the operational level rather than the management level. And so I think there's some there's been some good communication going back and forth between CV Fiber and and WEC. Believe that is Jerry's report. So I'm sorry I couldn't share that. But I can see I can see he sent it out to everybody. David, 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 we, David. We, were, we were able to see your screen on that. So you are still sharing your screen as a heads up. Oh. All right. All right. That is my Patrick report. All right, thanks very much, David. Any uh, any questions for for David? Okay. Uh, question. Right. Yeah, go for it. Where might we find the identification of the towns associated with the various areas? That's um, so we've identified the area uh, area A. Um, Brian, um, well, we can talk offline, and I can okay. explain to you more. It's so we we've declared that to be a to be a trade secret, so that it's not for public disclosure yet. So I'm I'm happy to share that with you um, outside of this meeting. Okay, great, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, uh, committee appointments. I understand that uh, we have at least one appointment that a committee would like to recommend. I heard you start to talk, Ray. Oh, I didn't start to talk. Can you hear me? Oh, we yep. can hear you now. Okay, so a um, couple things. One is to um, recall that the WEC MOU needs to move up because Chris is leaving. Oh, right, right, right. Second, I'm sorry. It's, it's, yeah. Secondly, so you, that um, um, at the at, a la at the last session or, or maybe the finance committee meeting that uh, Linda had expressed an interest in uh, for joining one or more committees, and so I. I I wanted this on the agenda, and there are folks here that are new that uh, might be interested in joining one of our committees as well. If you go to cvfiber.net, you'll see the charters for each of the committee, so you have an idea of uh, exactly the kind of work we're doing. Uh, and perhaps we could postpone this a little bit, give people a chance to look at that, and then come back to it. Sure. All right, so let's move on to the WEC MOU. And Krista, I made you a presenter. If you'd like to share your screen or you can proceed as you like. 
Hi, thanks very much. I actually did not prepare um, a presentation for you. Um, so I was going to talk about the WEC MOU at a high level and then offer to answer any questions if that works. Yep. Fine. Um, so um, the the WEC MOU uh, is between, um, there's a series of MOUs. So each CUD um, is signing an MO, each CUD in the WEC territory, which is yourselves, EC Fiber, and NEK Broadband is signing an MOU with WEC in regards to the WEC network that would be built with RUS financing. The RUS application has been uh, submitted. There's been some initial, you know, verbal positive feedback. Um, the MOU is is fairly high level. It outlines the the basic terms that we will um, be. I have David very large on my screen. Hi, David. <laughs> um, with that, we will be. It outlines the basic terms um, that will be incorporated into the agreement. Um, WEC is taking the next step in terms of establishing what um, the terms uh, of the agreement are, and then and then we'll work together as a group from there. Um, so, in terms of approval of this MOU, it provides um, an opportunity to fund a, a, a fairly large portion of your project with long-term, um, low interest rate financing. Um, it will incur the costs of administering that financing for WEC, which could include items such as the interim financing that they'll have to get to cover costs um, because the RUS loan financing is um, reimbursed um, financing, um, and as well as uh, you know project management support. But overall, um, the evaluation that's been done is that this will will be significantly less expensive because of the cost of the um, borrowing and the length of time it's borrowed over um, and uh, enable much more of the build to be built faster than, than might otherwise happen. Um, they need to have an agreement in place in order to be successful in getting their financing approved by the Public Utility Commission. And so the goal is to work towards a uh, dark fiber agreement um, as quickly as possible. Are there any questions? Does anybody have any questions for Krista or any um <clears throat> Any thoughts about the MOU that, uh, that David sent out? So the the next step that you'll take is to is to vote to um, approve entering into the MOU uh, and those um, that MOU has been sent around um, for your review. Okay, in the interests of moving things forward, then I'm going to move that we approve the MOU as presented. Second. Second. Okay, Chuck beat you there, Jeremy. Dang it. So uh, moved by me, seconded by Chuck. Any further discussion about the WEC MOU? Okay, I'm not hearing any additional discussion, so I'm, I'll take that to be a, a good sign. I want to thank you, Krista, for all your work on this. It was definitely, uh, you know, there was a lot of <laughs> a lot a lot of steps getting here. I I know, so I and I definitely appreciate that. Um, Hopefully, they'll facilitate the contract process. Yeah, let's let's, let's hope so. Let's, let's hope so. Let, let's let's hope it's all smooth from here and everybody's uh, and everybody's arm in arm. Kumbaya. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> All right, so are there any objections to um, adopting the MOU as presented? David? Nope. This is Brian. This is Brian Evans Mungin. I'm going to abstain as I've not been part of the process. Okay. Thanks for that, Brian. Okay, so I'm going to assume without objection that this is being adopted um, unanimously, and we can move on to the, to the next thing, and we can let Krista go. Super. Thanks very much, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Take care. Thanks, Krista. Yep. See you later. Okay.
Okay, back to committee appointments. Do we want to? Uh, did you want to push this to the end, Ray? Was that what you were imagining? No, I, we can bring it up at any time if people are. Uh, if anybody wants to raise their hand and, and indicate which committees they'd like to join. Okay. So um, let you know. Let's let's kick this to the end. If, if folks want to spend some more time and, and review um, review what's out there, we can do that. Um, hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Um, so let's go on to uh, Grant's update. Jeremy, you do have a raised hand from Linda. Oh, oh okay. She just put it down. Never mind. So, I'll okay. wait for the rest of the people. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Linda. Um, the grants update, I think we got most of that out of the way with, with the uh, PM report. Is there anything else that we should be talking about um, related to grants? I think that's it. I mean, we can do the... We do the town outreach update. You'll get more on money, but that in terms of grant, the opera money from the state of Vermont, it's that was in his jury's report. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, I, I I can't think of anything else that we would add. All right, so um, an update on the developer operator, David. Yes. Um, so as I mentioned in the in the um, PM report, we are um, busily reviewing the team is busily reviewing the um, the applications that came in or the proposals that came in um, they're both uh, pretty competent app applicants um, and we will you know try to get the one thing that i've requested that we consider is getting a technical expert to help us review the two finalists so that we're not shooting in the dark totally from our volunteer standpoint so I've you know reached out to CTC Technologies in um, I think they're in Maryland um, who helped DV Fiber go through their review process of proposals, and I and what I I guess I'd like to recommend is let the executive committee try to r wrestle with you know whether we go forward with contracting with them on a time and materials basis or not, but I think we're going to need that kind of help. Um, I think the team has done a great job of going through the the five five lengthy proposals we received. And Lee is to say, even though we tried to force them to use apples to apples comparisons, we did not get apples to apples comparisons. <laughs> so, and hopefully the questions we asked will help do that. Um, so that's where we are. I have, um, in terms of a calendar, what did I do with my calendar? I actually have a calendar. Of, um, Try to get the the answers to questions are due on Friday of this week, and we'll the team will review the uh, questions next week and uh, draft interview questions um, or a framework for how we want to do this and hopefully work with a consultant on this, and then schedule interviews hopefully in the week of the 27th. So we got a sort of a fast track, and then bring it to the planning and development committee. Um, at the end of the month and then next week, next month, early next month, bring it to the board. It may stretch out longer than that. Where I see the biggest thing, the time drain, we may be able to pick the firm relatively quickly, but negotiating a contract is probably going to take a month at least. DV Fiber told me today they're still negotiating their contract. So oh, their, their agreement, their, their I, agreement I, I don't know if it's a contract. Know, but, um, so anyway, it's, it's moving along. Um, and if there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. I actually, I actually have two. Uh, one is, do you have a sense of the cost of what DV Fiber paid for to CTC for this work? I do not. But I, I what I've outlined is probably, you know, twelve to twenty hours <laughs> at the most. <laughs> okay. No. So, so, so what's our, what's our, what's our order of magnitude then? Of so, I mean, twelve to twenty hours at a hundred. Twelve to twenty hours at. Oh, I'd say two hundred. It'd probably be two hundred dollars an hour. Okay, so we're looking at what maybe five five k top. Yeah. Yep. We can we can bring this up at the executive committee meeting on Thursday, Jeremy, where the, the executive committee has the authority to enter into these kinds of engagements. And I'll have more information by then. Okay. And so th my other question is, did you see the announcement that uh, NEK had chosen their their operator developer? 
I haven't read the press release, but yes, NAK Broadband has selected um, a, a team made up of any NRTC, Waitsville, Champlain Telecom, and Mission Broadband. And they are one of the firms that have applied to do ours. Um, the role is Waitsville, Champlain Telecom is their ISP. NRTC is do the engineering and construction. And Mission Broadband is to manage the overall project. That's how, and it's similar to the one they submitted to us. Mute. All right, so I'm going to, it looks like Katharina is trying to reconnect and it's not letting me reconnect her. Okay, any, um, any questions for David about the uh, developer operator update? Jeremy Matt has his hand up. Go for it, Jeremy. Do we need a motion to kick this over to the executive committee? Uh, the answer is no. Okay. So, so we have it in our current authorized budget for the executive committee to do this? We have in the current authorized charter for the executive committee to do this. Whether we have, yeah. We have to see whether we have the money or not. The money's a separate item, but we do have the money. Well, I'll, I'll rephrase. Um, there's money in the budget. The question is how much is it going to cost? So, so the short answer here is that the executive committee has already been approved to, to tackle this and we'll be tackling this on Thursday then. Right. Cool. So let's, um, let's move on. Um, RFP, RFB contracting updates. Is that yours, Ray? Well, I, I think that um, I think that uh, the project manager covered a great deal of that. What I would say is that um, uh, the accounting is still open, and we're expecting a couple of more proposals. The audit uh, uh, proposals are due on Friday. Uh, I was given a list um, of additional people for accounting and auditing, and I forwarded the RFPs to them. So uh, I would say that uh, by the next by the board meeting in October might be in a position to make recommendations on those positions, those engagements. OK, very good. Thanks for that, Ray. Any questions for Ray about that stuff? All right, moving along still, town outreach update. Want to take that, David or Ray? I mean, I, I don't really have any other updates since the last time we met. Well, there's probably a couple of bits. Uh, one is that um, we have um, asked Krista to review the uh, MOU, and I can tell you that um, I've seen a couple of drafts of that, and it, it has been sent over to Rob um, and the other the town attorney for um, uh, f further iteration. Uh, in addition, there are uh, people, uh, board members, who are interested in making presentations, uh, Linda being one of them, for example, and, and Woodbury. And um, and there may be some others, and so we're we're going to be working with her and any anybody else that wants one, and uh, I'm happy to make some draft presentation materials available to you uh, that we can go through, and so that that's those are the two bits I have. All right, Alan. I think Alan, you have an update from Worcester, don't you? Yes, I do. Can can you hear me? Yep. OK, I'm I'm having trouble with the connection and uh, teams. Uh, yeah, Worcester has has allocated voted to allocate the select board voted to allocate fifty thousand uh, dollars towards uh, of the town's ARPA funds. And this is money that the town now now has in hand in an account. So it's actually available. But I think we're all still working on the uh, MOU between an individual town and CV Fiber, um, and that's 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 the impediment we have to actually receiving those funds at this point. And I, I Jeremy had a, had suggested maybe trying to trying to do our own agreement, but the more that I've looked at this and talked with people about it, it seems pretty clear we really should have one agreement that. Is something that all towns are using with CV fiber, just I think for our own sanity as an organization, because if we start getting into 20 different 
MOUs with different uh, requirements for us in terms of, I don't know, reporting or whatever, I think it would be a nightmare. So somehow we've we've got to get the MOU, the the draft of of a singular M MOU moving so that so that we can actually begin to take in some of this money. Yeah. Uh, agreed, and I re I'm realizing now that the update that I last gave was not to the governing board, but was to the finance committee. So I should probably mention that um, the folks at Middlesex have elected to um, slow down and not allocate any money to CV Fiber right now until there is better defined rules from the Department of Treasury. And they're following the advice of CVRPC and the League of Cities and Towns. So um, hopefully we'll have some movement either on the part of Treasury or the League or CVRPC in convincing them otherwise that we can um, and should move forward with this. Um, but I see uh, Josh has a hand up and then Henry. Uh, can you hear me? Yep. Perfect. Um, in regards to town outreach, um, I think in the, the last meeting we were in and possibly the one before that, um, I had mentioned that I had already done, I had already done a town outreach uh, before we had anything, uh, any canned presentation made. Um, there were some things that came out of that, and I know, uh, Jeremy, you had reached out to me um, directly, and I did respond back to you. I didn't know if there was a there was a time or a place that you thought it would be uh, good to discuss that, so we could determine how we wanted to kind of settle those odd oddities that came out of the uh, the select board of my town. Yeah, I mean, from from my perspective, it's really there's one select member who I think kind of misunderstands um, what we're doing and our relationship to, to Barrytown. So I was hoping that it could be maybe just you and me and the select board member and we can um, just talk it over and just make sure that everybody's clear. Um, I, I, I did see your email back and, and I just need to, we just need to set a time and reach out to um, the select board member to um, Hopefully, just hopefully have that set sit down. I mean, I can't imagine it's going to take long. So just to get him up to date will be uh, valuable, I think. Yeah, I think it it could be very valuable, and maybe uh, with a better understanding, because uh, obviously his his understanding is quite skewed. Uh, we we may be able to maybe make some headway with my town, which would be fantastic. So, thank you. That's all I have. All right. Thanks, Josh. Henry. Uh, yes, I just wanted to mention that uh, Duxbury is interested in having a presentation, customized presentation for the select board. And also I have another question, which is um, at one point we were talking about the town's money um, being able to be kind of allocated for drops or expenditures from the, you know, from the main line to uh, you know, to individual premises. And has that gone any further um, as a tangible thing that the towns would get um, from contributing these funds? My, my understanding is that we're still sort of trying to better understand the parameters of how the money can be spent. And that may end up being <clears throat> the way that is most um, palatable and most um, defensible to Treasury. I mean, uh, and, and I don't know if anybody else has any sort of perspective on that, but that's, I was sort of ex waiting for the legal review of this to finish first. Okay, so so I, I, I think I've summarized wh where we are with that then. I see uh, John Morris is next. Uh, it's just wondering. Don't do that. So John's That's having good. some audio issues. <laughs> He's sitting right next to me, and he just asked if I had the meeting with Marshfield last month, and the answer was, 
the answer is yes, it went really well. Um, we talked at length. Um, I didn't really plan on being there that long, but it was a really good conversation. So um, um, they are, they seem to be willing to allocate most, if not all of the ARPA funds to us. Um, I forwarded Bobby, the town clerk there, um, the MOU that we had telling her that it was under review, kind of in a similar spot as we're, um, as we've been talking about before, where we kind of want to ha have it reviewed and have towns comfortable with it first. Um, and one other thing that came out of that was a discussion about um, Marshfield as being a place, probably a really good place for a hub location. So that was another letter that went out to towns um, requesting if they have space for hosting networking network equipment or hosting, you know, a little bit of a bigger space um, that they should get back to us. And I've really only heard from, I talked to the, the select board chair in Middlesex and he sort of talked me through what they have available and they've got some, they've got some good options available there. He just hasn't sent me the, uh, the data he was uh, supposed to, um, but Marshfield, we did get that. Or, or 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 David, did I, did I send you one or the other? Was it Marshfield I sent you? Mm, that doesn't ring a bell. What 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 data did I send you for the uh, for the hub location? Do you remember? Oh, the hub location was Marshfield. Oh yeah, it was the town okay. office, the, the school right. huts. Yeah. 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 Okay. And I know, so, and, and, and uh, the, the only thing I want to say is I know that I prepared a slide for a Waterbury presentation. I don't know if um, that's gonna you know, happen when, but anyway, that's a, something in the It's in the works. Yeah, that's that that's coming soon. We we have a meeting um, soon to sort out what, what that's going to look like and what, when that's going to happen. So. OK, anything else on town outreach? Has, has anybody else heard from any of the towns about hub locations? Because I've heard nothing. So, so probably would be a good idea um, at some point to reach out to select boards and or clerks again, and I'll probably do it electronically rather than with a letter this time, and just say, here's what we're here's really what we're looking for. Um, uh, we're in order to do our high level and detailed design, we really kind of need to have some options on the table. Yeah. So I think the high level design may tell us how many we need. Well, and so if the high level design, you know, identifies some logical places, we can maybe just go and ask and say, is this available and kind of go backwards into it rather than asking what's available and then build based on that. So um, anyway, so for, for area A anyways, it seems like um, Middlesex is very willing, has three different locations in, th in three geographically separate places that any of which could be uh, seem to me just just hearing about it could be good candidates. All right, um, moving along from town outreach then. Uh, I don't see any hands. Um, high level design update, David. Yeah. So the um, the consultant is Vantage Point Solutions out of Mitchell, South Dakota. They have a team that we have transferred all the GIS data that I had to them to use to do this design. And it's for the three CUDs in WEC territory, and then the remaining part of CV5 is non-WEC area, which is quite a bit of, and by it's probably half of a half of the project. So they're doing them together, and um, they're they think they probably have some sketches sometime in in uh, early mid October of to get feedback from us before they go into a lot of detail. Um, I'm still pushing them to. Uh, to uh, move faster. They want to know where there were access points. And uh, Carol Monroe from ValleyNet gave me the complete list of all the access points that FirstNet has. So I sent them to them today. Um, yeah, they, they're looking for that kind of information. Um, but I, I think they're they're moving they're moving ahead. I mean, it, you know, I, like everything like this would like it yesterday, but <laughs> we'll, we'll be patient. Yeah, it feels like a very exciting step. I mean, to be yeah. able to have a, to be able to have a map in hand and say that this is something that we're going to actually 
proceed with. So just to give people an idea of right now, the the three CUD WEC team has, you know, on the review on the participants and the high level design, it's it's been Krista Shute and Kristen Fountain from NEK Broadband. But since they've now hired an operator manager, their consultant from Mission Broadband is now their liaison to the high-level design. Up until this point, WEC is the only entity other, well, no, I shouldn't say, ValleyNet has always had Carol. And WEC hired a, a, a fiber engineer out of New York to work part-time as their consultant on this to oversee it. So we're the last organization that doesn't have somebody who is um, can talk the language. But anyway, we'll get there. Um, so I'm, I'm actually happy that NEK Broadband, having a, having um, uh, some good different perspectives on what the technology ought to be and how it ought to work is, is good. So, so. Lot, lot of noise from your side, Ray. Probably going to get noisier because we're going to talk about the budget. Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, cool. I'm done. Yeah, anything? You're good, David. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Great. So, um, before we do the budget, uh, committee appointments. I believe somebody asked to be on the planning and development committee, and I've forgotten or lost the email. I see some hands up. Uh, start with Jeremy. Uh, so I'm really, really busy at this point and am going to need to step back from the finance committee. Um, I'm just going to have trouble making all these meetings. Yeah. OK, thanks for letting us so, know. I just found the email. It was Linda Gravel who wants to join the planning development, so I'll nominate her. <laughs> That's me, yes. <laughs> okay, so 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 before you nominate her, let's let, let's hear from from everybody. So I, I see Linda's next, then uh, Christopher Shank, then Tom Fisher. I am interested in the planning and development committee. I have worked in telecommunications. I'm a software developer consultant, and and I've been a, a project manager. I think I have some skills that could be valuable for planning and development. Did you also want to serve on the finance committee too, Linda? <laughs> Accounting was not my best subject in, in uh, management school, <laughs> but if you need me there, I will. So, so the the reason I ask it is that 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 was the appointment that I thought was happening today, but it yep. could I could have misunderstood. All right. Well, so so you, so you didn't say no and. You know, someone who's re recruited candidates, and, and I'm sure you've recruited candidates, and they don't say no, then you have a chance. So, all right, we'll 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 put you on both then. Thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah. yeah. All right, uh, Christopher, you're up next. Hi. So there's a good reason that Linda and I were both selected for the to be the primary and, and delegate uh, primary delegate and. Uh, alternate for Waterbury because our skills and our interests are very much aligned. I was also going to volunteer for the Planning and Development Committee, and I am also uh, not super strong at finance. So sorry to complicate things, but um, there you have it. Well, That's good, Christopher. We can stumble along together in finance. There we go. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, what, yeah, are the, what are the needs for for the committees? Just out of curiosity. Yeah, that's that's a good question. So we've we have uh, what five committees that meet regularly. So uh, executive committee is uh, that's kind of separate, but we've got planning and development, communications, uh, policy, and uh, finance. So those are really where we're looking for for folks to to join and do some extra work beyond the governing board meetings. So, I guess I guess my question my question really was um, how many people on each committee are you are you looking for? It sounds like you might need more on finance than other committees, but 
Maybe that's wrong. Well, we have we have one fewer because Jeremy Matt just stepped down from it. So it would be good to have that sort of topped up because I think that puts us at what six Ray? Six or seven, yeah. Okay. So and we so we have we sometimes have issues of um we have issues of quorum. So if you have a like a three person committee, anytime two people on that committee talk about business related to CV fiber, it's public record. Um, and it has to be a part of a warned meeting. So uh, if we have a decent decent handful of people on committees, then we have less of a chance of tripping over the, um, pub the open meetings law and public records and such. So. I'll just add on the flip side of that though, if the uh, uh, quorum gets too big, sometimes we've had difficulty making meetings actually happen, although, uh, having remote meetings has alleviated that. That was particularly a problem when, you know, people had to drive in the middle of snowstorms in Vermont. Right. So kind of the more the merrier. Um, but uh, on the other hand, I think what Chuck is saying is that if you join a committee meeting, there is an expectation that you'll actually, that you'll actually be there because that can be, it can be a, it can kill a meeting if there's not enough people there. Is it a two thirds uh, quorum? It's a simple majority. So 50% plus one. Um, so Tom, you had your hand up before. Do you still have a question or comment? No, my, my comment was about quorum and you guys have covered it. Cool. Glad to hear it. So, um, so David nominated Linda for the Planning and Development Commission or Committee, um, I'd like to nominate um, Linda to the uh, Finance Committee and also appoint um, Christopher Schenk to the Planning and Development Committee. Second. Okay. Any um, any further discussion? All right. If there's no objections, then uh, they are they are appointed. Thanks everybody. Really appreciate putting in the, the extra the extra work on it. Okay. Um, now we go into the noisier part of the meeting. Hopefully not too too noisy. Uh, the 2022 budget. Um, I do not have my motions in front of me uh, and such, but Ray, I think I can count on you. You probably still have that. I, I still do have that. And uh, so before. Before moving that we go into executive session, I just want to make uh, one observation, and that is um, in, in Q4, we are likely to spend a million dollars, which is the biggest outlay of cash, <laughs> indicating that we're finally getting some traction. Um, about three quarters of that will be for poll inventory. About another 100K for high level design is about 250, close to 250,000 for Northfield, Roxbury, and, and, and Moorefield uh, construction work. And so you can see that um, in this last quarter, we're gonna spend more than we spent in the previous uh, year and a half, maybe. <laughs> anyway, it's, uh, we, we're finally getting some traction on the risk. So the, the, um, uh, we're, I'd like to go into executive session. The motion is move that we enter executive session to discuss records that are confidential pursuant to one VSA section 313A6, specifically financial details that relate to our strategic planning. Second. Okay, so moved by Ray, seconded by Chuck. Any further discussion? Any objections to this motion? Hearing no object, um, no objection. Well, well hold, hold that thought though. Um, so Ray, if you can mute real quick, I'm getting feedback from your side. Um, we need to decide who is coming in with us in terms of alternates and such. Um, we can, because alternates are going to be involved in, could be involved in the voting on the, uh, on the budget, I think it would make sense to bring them along. Um, I think we, we will have to um, bid adieu to our um, AmeriCorps folks and our Vicuda folks and Orca. I think that's the only folks I see on the 
on the roster that would be that we'd be kicking off. I see a hand up from Jeremy. Yeah, I just wanted to say that um, I can take the minutes for the rest of the meeting, Christian, and it's not going to be much, but. Okay, so if, if that's okay, if I can friendly amend that we include our alternates as well. And if there are no objections, then I will take that as being as passing unanimously and we are in executive session. So I'm going to go ahead and say goodbye to Gavin and Will and Orca. Thanks for joining us and Christian for that matter too. Bye-bye.